Hey friends, so um, yesterday we started in this unit talking about how to write the equation of a line, okay? And our focus on yesterday's lesson was the first way we write an equation of a line, which was called slope y-intercept form. And it was y equals mx plus b, um, where m was your slope and b was your y-intercept, okay? What we wanna take a look at today is the next form of writing an equation of a line, which is called slope point form and it's often used when you're trying to build an equation, but you don't actually know what the y-intercept is, okay? y equals mx plus b form is really only good if you know what the y-intercept is. If you're just given a random point and that point is not the y-intercept, then slow point form is often the better building option for you, okay? So <clears throat> let's start with what you know. I've given you a graph here and we're going to create an equation using y equals mx plus b. So this is just a quick review of what we did yesterday. Uh, you would take a look at this and you would say, hey, I've got a y-intercept at one. I have a slope of, let's see what I do here. I'm gonna go up one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four. So I have a slope of three over four and I have a y-intercept of one. So that would end up being y equals three over four x plus one. I just plug in my three over four for m and I use my one for my b value. Okay, perfect, easy. We did that yesterday, everything's good. Okay, uh, when we know the y-intercept and the slope, writing the equation of a line is fairly easy. You only needed two things to make the equation of a line you needed the slope and you need a point. Now, in yesterday, the point that we needed was a special point, it was the y-intercept. Now what we're gonna take a look at is what happens if we don't have the y-intercept. So take a look at this graph for a sec. And what I want you to realize right away is, well, I can figure out the slope for sure, that's no problem. Let's take a look at uh, going, okay, from that point to that point. So we'll go up one, two, three and over one, two, three, four. So I still have a slope of three over four here, okay? But I don't know what my y-intercept is. Now I'm guessing here, I said, hey, it's a little after negative one. Uh, it's not all the way to halfway, like halfway would be right about where I'm putting my, my mouse right now. So it's less than negative 1.5. Actually, I should say greater than negative 1.5 because we're talking about negatives right now, but, um, it's somewhere in between negative one and negative 1.5. So negative 1.2 maybe, maybe it's negative 1.3, maybe it's negative 1.25, we don't know, and that's the problem, okay? So what assumptions are you making? We're assuming the y-intercept right now is at negative 1.2. Now, we don't like to assume anything in math. That's kind of a big deal. So we're going to come up with a new method for when we're not 100% certain what the y-intercept is. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in two different ways. The first thing I'm gonna do is say, okay, we already know the slope. Um, let's find one other point that we know, and we'll substitute that into x and y in the equation that we dealt with yesterday, which was y equals mx plus b. Anytime you have a point that you know is on the line, those are um, okay uh, substitutions to make. You can plug that x value in for x and that y value in for y, and that's often helpful to find something that you don't know, okay? So for the line in question two, the slope was three over four. We already knew that. So right now we're gonna build the equation as y equals three over four x plus b, and we don't know b. So we're gonna take one of the points that we know for sure, and we're gonna plug it in for x and y, okay? So you could take this point that you know for sure, which is negative one comma negative two, plug negative one in for x, and plug negative two in for y. Or you could have taken this point, uh, which would have been three comma one, so you could have plugged three in for x and one in for y. Or, or you could have taken another point if you are satisfied that you know exactly what that point is, okay? I personally would choose two of the ones that were kind of made obvious to you, that way you won't, uh, you won't make a mistake, okay? So I happen to have chosen the point three comma one, so I'm going to take my y equals mx plus b, I'm going to plug in uh, three over four for my m value, I'm gonna plug in three for my x value, and I'm gonna plug in one for my y value. Okay, so I've done all that. Now I need to do a little bit of math. Three over four times three, that'd be nine over four when you're multiplying the three over four by three. Three is like three over one, and you just multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms when you're dealing with fractions. So that'd be nine over four. So now I wanna subtract nine over four from both sides. 
Um, and so I'm going to think about my one um, as four over four. So I have a common denominator and then four over four minus nine over four would give me negative five over four. Okay, so B is negative five over four. And now I know that my equation is Y equals three over four X minus five over four. Now I'm absolutely certain what my Y intercept is. My Y intercept is zero comma negative five over four. I'm not guessing anymore. I know that for sure, okay? All right, so another way we could figure it out is to use this new process that we wanted to deal with today called slope point form. Slope point form of a linear function starts from the slope formula, okay? Remember that we only need a point and a slope to find the any equation of a line. Any point on the line has coordinates x comma y, and a specific point has coordinates x1 comma y1. The slope of a line is denoted with m, so that's not going to change. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this information into the slope formula. What's the slope formula? Well, we talked about that a couple of days ago. That was m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, now I know m and I know that we're going to use the point x1, y1. So we're going to take a look at these guys here and we say this is the point that, this is the random point that I know. If we're going to use x1, y1 um, <clears throat> as x1, y1, then I don't need to use that 2 anymore, okay? Um, so I'm going to drop the subscript of the 2 and um, just call this guy x and this guy y. So we're looking at this now. Okay, so the x and y that you see are the x and y that will be part of my equation. And then the x1, y1 that you see are actually going to be the point that I know. So now I want to get this so that um, I don't have a fraction anymore. So I'm, I want to get rid of a division of x minus x1. So I multiply both sides by x minus x1 and I get this. Okay, and that actually is slope point form. Okay. Um, just let me take off this ink for you here. In general, the equation of a line that passes through point P, which we're denoting as x1 comma y1, and has a slope of m, will be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's exactly what I had on the previous slide. I just switched what was on the left and what was on the right. Okay, this is known as slope point form for an equation of a line. Now, super important. What you're going to be very comfortable with is that m right here is my slope, okay? What you have to get comfortable with is the point I know is x1 comma y1. But here's where that gets tricky. Look at this. It's x minus whatever x1 is, and it's y minus whatever y1 is. And this is where it gets super tricky, okay? So if this said, x minus 3, okay, my x1 is 3. So don't look at that negative and say that it's negative 3. It's not because it has to be x subtract whatever x1 is, okay? Likewise, if that had said x plus 3, the equation actually says x minus whatever x1 is. So in order for that to have been true, it must have said x minus negative 3. That's where that plus sign came from. And so in that instance, my x1 would be negative 3. Okay, so that's super, super important that you pay very, very close attention to that. Okay, so let's practice that. For each of these guys, I want to know the slope and I want to know the point. Okay, again, the slope's right there, so that won't be too hard. The slope there is 2. The point, though, will be 3, 5. Okay, it's x minus whatever x1 is, so x1 is 3, x2 is 5. So the point is 3, comma 5. For the next guy, okay, uh, my slope, that'll be okay. My slope is negative 2 over 3. That's where the m is. Now, the point x1 will be 5, but look at y1. This says y plus 2, which means it must have said y subtract negative 2. So my y1 there is negative 2, which means the point is 5 comma negative 2. So I have a slope of negative 2 over 3, and I have a point 
of 5 comma negative 2. You try the next two on your own. Okay, so for this guy, I should have a slope of 3 over 4, and the point would be negative 6 comma positive 1. And then for this guy, I had a slope of negative 4, and the point would have been negative 2 comma negative 1. Be careful that you remember that x has to go first, so you're looking at this guy for your x, and you're looking at this guy for your y, and you're thinking about the fact that it's always x minus whatever x1 is, and it's y minus whatever y1 is, okay? Awesome. So write an equation in slope point form for this line. Well, I need the slope and I need a point. The slope is 3 over 4, and the point I'm going to use is 3 comma 1, okay? So I just plug that right into my formula. Again, this formula, this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, that will be given to you on a formula sheet. Um, it won't say that it's slope point form, though. It'll just say that equation, okay? Okay, so I want to rewrite this now um, in y equals mx plus b form, okay? So that is my slope point form. All of that's done. That is perfect if I asked you for the slope point form equation. But now I'm going to ask you an additional question where I'm going to say, okay, write this in y equals mx plus b form instead. Now, um, there's a couple different ways you can look at this. I'm going to go with what I think kids find the easiest way, which is let's just get rid of the fractions first. Um, Whenever we don't have to deal with fractions, that usually makes us feel a little better, okay? That doesn't mean we won't have to put the fraction back later, but for now, let's get rid of it. We can get rid of it by thinking about the fact that we are dividing by 4 here, and so we just need to multiply both sides by 4, and that would look like this, okay? The 4 ends up getting multiplied by this y minus 1, and then when I multiply this side by 4, my 4s divide each other out, and I'm just left with a 3. Now I just distribute the 4 into that guy and distribute the 3 into that guy. And then I need to get y by itself. y equals mx plus b, y is always isolated. It's completely by itself. So I need to add 4 to both sides. And then I'll need to divide both sides by 4, or all sides by 4, all terms by 4. Both sides by 4 and all terms by 4. So that's going to give me 3 over 4x minus 5 over 4. Okay. Now, a couple of very important points I want to make before we keep going here. This guy and this guy are the exact same thing. They're just written in two forms. They mean the exact same line. They mean the graph that you see to the right, but the orange guy is in slope point form and the green guy is in y equals mx plus b form. The other thing I want to make a note of is this is still the equation I started with. Um, the y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 5 over 4, just like we found it out when we were doing the other method. If you want to just go back and check your notes there, um, in both methods, we still end up with the same thing, okay? Awesome. So write an equation in slope point form uh, of a line that passes through the point 3 comma negative 5 and is parallel to 3 over 4. Now, if something's parallel, that means the slope has to be the same. So you always want to take stock before you start building the equation. You want to state what you need as a slope and what you need as a point, okay? So I have a slope of 3 over 4 and I have a point of 3 comma negative 5. I have a slope and a point, so I'm going to build this equation in slope point form, okay? Which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So x1 is 3, y1 is negative 5, and my m value is 3 over 4. So I plug that all in, and I'm done. It asks for the equation in slope point form. That is the equation in slope point form. So that is the answer to the question. OK? Uh, write an equation of a line that passes through these two points, g and h. Write your answer in slope intercept form. So that's y equals mx plus b. OK? This time. Remember, to build an equation, I need a slope and a point. I don't know my slope right now, so I have to actually figure out my slope first. That's okay. We know a formula for that. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I go 9 minus 3 over negative 4 minus negative 5, and I get a slope of 6. Okay. Now, I need the slope. I got that. And a point. I have two points available to me. It doesn't matter which one I use. Um, just pick one of them. So I happen to have picked the negative 5, 3, which is just the first point I saw. So I used this guy as my x1 and my y1. And then my slope was 6. 
And so that would be the equation in slope point form. But now the question actually asked me to answer it in slope intercept form. So now I need to work on getting rid of the brackets and getting y by itself. So I'm going to distribute the 6 and then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And so in um, y equals mx plus b form, I have y equals 6x plus 33. Okay, and now I can say algebraically that my y-intercept for this line has to be at 0, 0,33 because I see it in y equals mx plus b form. Okay, all right, write an equation of a line using point-slope form of the following. It's parallel to y equals 1 half x plus 3 and it has the same intercept, x-intercept, as this guy. Well, I have some work to do then. First of all, I have to figure out the slope I need, and I need to figure out the point I need. So I know it has to be parallel to this guy, which means it has to be the same slope as this guy. So that'll be a half. But I have to figure out the x-intercept for this guy. How do I figure out an x-intercept? I let y equal 0. Remember, we've talked about that in other lessons. If I want the x-intercept, I let y equal 0. So I'm going to have to do that. So here I am letting y equal 0 and I need to solve for x, so I'm going to add 12 to both sides. I'll multiply both sides by 2 and divide by 3, and that will give me x all by itself, and that will tell me that x equals 8, which means the point I'm looking for is 8 comma 0. Okay, so now I have the slope that I want, I have m, and I have the point that I want. This is my x1, and this is my y1. Okay. And so I take that information and I go and plug it into slope point form. I don't have to say y minus 0 because y minus 0 is just y. And so that is my answer in slope point form. Okay. Then is perpendicular to the line negative 4x plus 3 and passes through the point. So I was given the point this time. I don't have to do any additional work to get the point. I do have to do a little bit of additional work to get the slope. I know that the slope of this line is negative 4, but I need a perpendicular slope. Remember that perpendicular slopes are the negative reciprocal. So the negative reciprocal of negative 4 would be positive 1 over 4. So I'm going to build an equation that has a slope of 1 over 4 and passes through this point. And so I end up with y minus y1, y minus 3 equals m. My m is 1 quarter and it'd be x minus negative 8, which would simplify to x plus 8, okay? So this is the slope point form version. I didn't ask you to write it as y equals mx plus b, so I'm done. That is my answer there, okay? Awesome. So uh, we are getting into a little bit more algebra here. We're going to have more algebra to deal with in the next lesson when we talk about general form, uh, but do try these problems. Really make sure you're understanding that it's always in the form x minus x1. That's something that really trips students up and y minus y1. Really think that through as you're trying to do the homework. As always, if you have any questions, please, please, please connect with me. And then we'll see you next time for general form. Take care.